Collective bargaining. It's a process where employees work with a union to negotiate their terms of employment. Things like pay, scheduling, hours, employee benefits, family, balance, and more. Today, we're diving into the subject of the collective bargaining process. My name is Jessica Miller Merrill. I'm the founder of Workology and the creator of the ACE the HR exam. Today we're talking about the collective bargaining process. What HR leaders need to know when it comes to collective bargaining and working with unions for their HRCI and SHRM certification exams. Are you ready? Let's get started. The process of collective bargaining is really to come to a mutual decision and conclusion that benefits the business and the employee group or employees that are represented by a union. Normally, you have two different groups of people who are involved in the collective bargaining process to come to an agreement, which is called a collective bargaining agreement or CBA. Those are members of management, which is normally executive leaders. Oftentimes, human resources is involved in these conversations. I know I have when I've been involved in collective bargaining agreements. And then you normally have the second group, which is members of the union. And these are not necessarily the union rep, but executive leaders of the union who are part of the mediation and negotiation process. Collective bargaining is a lot like buying a car or maybe purchasing your home. There are three different steps, but it involves, again, two different parties. So let's think about buying a car. It is you or your family member, and then the second group, which is your salesperson. Same thing when it comes to collective bargaining. You have the organization and then the individual, but they are represented, it's many individuals who are representative by a member or representative of the union. So the three different stages that you have is identification. So that's stage one. And that is both groups identifying what they need, what's most important in terms of compensation, time off, benefits, working conditions, whatever it might be. That is the identification. And then through identification, you also set a timeline. When are we going to come to an agreement or not and be able to walk away? So you do this when you buy a car, right? You think about what perks and benefits of that car do you need not most? Do you need two rows or three? Hatchback or a trunk? These are all things similar to the identification process when we're thinking about collective bargaining. Step two is negotiation, right? So you're wheeling and dealing. You've test drove the car. You know that you'll like it. Now comes the negotiation. We sat right here in this room and went over this and over this. Yeah, but that true coat. I sat right here and said I didn't want any true coat. Yeah, but I'm saying that true coat, you don't get it. You get oxidation problems. It'll cost you a heck of a lot more than $500. You're sitting there. You're, you're talking in circles. You're talking like we didn't go over this already. Yeah, but this true coat. We had a deal here for nineteen five. You sat there and darned if you didn't tell me you'd get me this car, these options, without the ceiling for nineteen five. All right. I'm not saying I didn't. You called me 20 minutes ago and said you had it ready to make delivery. It says, come on down and get it. And, 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 and here you are, and you're wasting my time and my wife's time, and, and I'm paying nineteen five for this vehicle here. All right, I'll talk to my boss. You have a price in mind. You have floor mats or not. Maybe you need cruise control added to the car, whatever it is. These are things that are incredibly important and you go back and forth between the salesperson and you. And so this is, these are the things that happen in the collective bargaining process. You go back and forth. There's some heated discussions. You leave the room, come back at a later date to continue the negotiation. Step three is contract administration. You have came to an agreement. You're getting your floor mats and your cruise control on your new three seat, three row, sorry, SUV just the same as the union and the employer have come into the agreement, now the paperwork begins. We have to actually sign the contract, and that is step three. 
it's the administration piece. You have to go to the finance guy to get the finance or you're writing a check. So you sign on the dotted line. This is a binding agreement, which becomes a collective bargaining agreement or CBA. So the CBA, the collective bargaining agreement, has been signed. And that's a binding contract for a period of time. There's a beginning and an ending to that contract. So the collective bargaining process is one that happens quite often. If you would like to see an example of a collective bargaining agreement, you can go to the HR Certification Study Group on Facebook or hrcertificationstudygroup.com. Under the file section, we have a sample collective bargaining agreement for you. This is a guideline that you're going to use when you are referencing potential situations or challenges that come up. This is your guidepost. It is your contract that both the union and you as the organization have agreed to for the duration of that particular agreement. There are three different parts to a collective bargaining agreement. There are mandatory, permissive, and illegal sections. So let's start with the mandatory. These are topics that are required to be in your CBA as outlined by the NLRB, the National Labor Relations Board. These are grievance procedures, benefits, perks, schedules, things that you need to know what happens if someone uh, has attendance issues. There's a process for grievances and such. And all these things are included in the mandatory section of your collective bargaining agreement. Now the permissive, permissive section, that is subjective, right? These don't have to be included and they're additional items. And this could be things like outlining your employee board of directors for the union or um, really some general things about how the union communicates with employees. Again, not mandatory, but really permissive areas. And then of course there's the illegal section of the CBA and these are things that are not allowed. And these are things like clothes shops. This is not allowed to and not allowed to be included in your CBA. And that is when the union only allows the company to hire people or members of that union into their organization or some form of a legal discrimination. So your CBA has three different sections. Really mandatory and permissive are the most common and included. Those illegal things, that's what's gonna get the union and you in some hot water with the National Labor Relations Board. Once the terms of the collective bargaining agreement have been reached, it is a binding contract. Prior to actually signing, you normally have your in-house or outside counsel for you as the employer and also for the union review that contract just to make sure everything's copacetic. It's good to get more eyeballs, particularly legal experts, on these things. When it is, once it is signed, it is binding for a period of time from the beginning to the end, which is outlined in that CBA. If you're looking for a copy of a CBA, you can join our HR Certification Study Group on Facebook. Under the file section, you can access that. Just go to hrcertificationstudygroup.com, join, access the file section, you can get your sample CBA. My name is Jessica Miller Merrill, and I'm the founder of Workology and the creator of the ACE, the HR certification exam. I am so excited that you took time to watch this video on the collective bargaining process. Let me know if you have any other thoughts, ideas, or suggestions on future topics.